today let's discuss on sales return so the first step to create a sales return is to create a disposition code so go to sales and marketing expand setup returns and click on disposition codes this is the first step that we need to create to post our sales return so here click new and under action you can see there are different actions available so based on the business scenario you can use different options like only credit or you can you know put the inventory to scrap or you can replace the inventory or you can replace the inventory and you know put the existing inventory to scrap so depending upon the scenario you have multiple options that can be selected so let's see here i'll select credit so let's give a number now i'll select uh, you know add product uh, back to inventory so this is what i will select here uh, so click save so in case when the product is coming back if you want to add charges for that then you can click on charges here and create charges for this line as of now so i'm not adding any charges uh, so let's go back so that is the setup step one is to create my disposition code once the disposition code is created now let's go for sales order return creation okay so to create a sales order return go to sales and marketing expand sales return and click on all return orders this is the place where we create my return order so click new to create a new sales return order so here select the customer account for whom we need to you know post the return order uh, so and then uh, you know i'm filling language because i'm not selected it's at the legal entity level that way uh, so you can also check you know there's a new number that's being created for my return order so click ok this is to generate my return order so once the return order is generated now you can see we can add the line so instead of manually adding the line what we can do here is find the initially posted sales order so that we can connect the existing sales order with my return order like if you go to your all sales order here let's say i want to post a return order for this new uh, you know sales order let's say this is my sales order which i have created uh, 15 number you can see here so this is a sales order for which i am posting my return order so here you can check the quantity you know the item so this is the one i want to post my return order against okay so now go to our return order click on find sales order so this is how we connect my sales order with my existing return order okay so here you can check this is the initial sales order that we posted so select this and you can check the quantity here unit price uh, coming from my sales order and click ok so this will you know interconnect between your return order and the original sales now here you can check the return quantity it is one and it's in negative because it's adding back right you can also check the product name and the price so whatever was there in my sales order the same thing is getting added here for reversal and now you see the status it is expected so the number is 16 for my return order so let's check once you know you create your sales return order is there any impact in the inventory so to go to inventory you have to go here or uh, you know go to product information management under products click on release products so this is where we'll be able to see my inventory uh, so let's say i want to check for shoe so select the product uh, so then under manage inventory click on on and inventory this is to check the impact of uh, you know, my return order so here you can see currently the physical quantity available is 99 so let's see after uh, you know posting reversal what will be the impact on this you can also click on transactions here to see if there's any transaction here so currently uh, you know there's one purchase and then one sales order so return order is not in there so let's go back to my sales return order here so the status currently is expected so the next step is to update the status so click on update line and here click on registration so this is basically to you know post my return order so here select the disposition code so this is the disposition code which we created remember so add product back to inventory so select this and click ok so this is to add my you know the status here so once you see the line here click on add registration line 
and then click confirm registration. So this will register my return order. Okay, once registered, so just go back here <clears throat> and now you can check the status. Okay, initially it was expected and now it is registered. So once it's registered, let's see if that has any impact on the inventory. So just refresh here. So now if you see here, the status registered. So the quantity one gets come back here. <clears throat> so this is not the actual physical quantity coming back to my warehouse, but it is ready to come to my warehouse. So that's why you can check the quantity one. Just close this. So if you see here, the physical availability, it is still 99 because the one product which went out is not yet come back to my warehouse, but it is registered to come back. So let's come back here. This is my written order. So once you register, now we can click on post packing slip. So this will post the packing slip. Basically, it will post my written order. So this confirms that the inventory is back to my warehouse. So click OK here. Uh, it's without printing, so that's okay. So this will post my packing slip, okay? So once the packing slip is posted, so let's now see my inventory. So initially it was 99. Now if I refresh, now if you see the inventory, it is changed to 100 because the one quantity I have posted my return and it's come back to my warehouse. So you can also click on transaction here. You can see it is received and quantity being one. So let's come back here. Uh, you know, if you want to check the accounting entry for return order under journals, click on packing slip. So this is where you see the accounting entry, uh, click on vouchers. So here basically, uh, you know, this accounting entry, what you see here, cost of goods and cost of units, it is basically reversed from your initial packing order, okay? Now, once the packing order is processed, the next step is to process invoice. Uh, so you cannot post invoice from the sales return order. So to post invoice for the return order, go to your sales order and click on all sales order. Once you click on all sales order, so here you can see the new number 16. That is my return order number. Okay, so the return order number is here and you can also check the order type. It is return order. So select this line. Now, <clears throat> So once we come to this line, this is where we post our invoice. So under invoice, under generate, click on invoice. So this basically will post my return order invoice. So select the number, customer slip on that is, and click OK. So this will basically post my return order. So click OK here. So this is posting my invoice. So here, my return order invoice is posted. So to see the accounting entry, click on invoice and click voucher. So here, once you see the accounting entry, so initially if you see your, your sales is, your income account is basically credited, that's your know, actual invoice. In the return order, if you observe here, it is reversed. So sales is debited, whereas your customer is credited. So this is how, your sales return order process works. That's it for the video. Thanks.